John, hello, here I am in leafy North London chatting to my favourite dog man. Is that weird to call you dog man, John? No, I've been called worse and <laughs> you're looking rural. You're actually looking quite rural there. Yeah, if you can't hear the roar of London traffic in the distance, then it's all good. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, little Pip is doing very well. She's 18 weeks-ish, I think. Great. So yes. uh, she's doing very, very well. We are now expanding her world a little bit and going to the park. And I guess it would be good to know, I'm all about avoiding problems. I don't want to have problems develop and then try and fix them. So how should I behave with my puppy in the park when she's saying hello to other dogs? She's very small. I want to yeah. rescue her sometimes. How much is too much rescue? I'm trying to not to do that too much. So right. how do I go about taking my puppy to the park? Okay, mate. Brilliant. Prevention is better than cure. Love it. Okay. So... We get a dog because we want to love it. We want to socialise with it. We want to take it out. We want to have fun with it. We want to do everything that normal people do when they get a dog in a normal life, in a normal household. However, as, as you quite rightly say, we have got to manage how we do that. What do I mean by that? Well, we want her to be out in a public place but still see us as the centre of her world. So as she grows older, she needs us at the moment because she's still immature, she still hasn't got confidence, she still kind of needs us as a little bit of a comfort blanket. But the day will come where she doesn't and she will go off and explore and go and say hello to dogs and all that kind of stuff. So even though we are out and about in the public environment and dogs may approach us, we don't really have any control over that. OK, dogs may approach us and then you find yourself in a social interaction where she is meeting another dog. But what we don't want to do is actively encourage her to meet 50 dogs every time she goes to the park. Okay. Because when we if we do that, we're rapidly devaluing ourselves and everything about us in her little universe. So then socialization within a public place is not about meeting as many dogs as you possibly can. Yes, you will have those interactions. That's just normal daily life. But we're talking about fire engines, buses, busy streets, um, stairs, concrete, grass, sand pits, all of the kind of environmental uh, differences that we want to expose her to so that she does grow up correctly with the right outlook the right confidence and the right maturity if we just put her in a park and say go and socialize we're rapidly rapidly losing our effect to actually have some um power or clout when we do want her to come back and we do want her to recall so be mindful about what we do with her when we are in that park so yeah. the tennis ball thing you know launch away it goes oh that's at least a mile away she's going to have so much fun and so much exercise and we need her to run that's not strictly true because what we're doing is we're teaching her she's going to get fun rewarded enrichment and pleasure and everything happy and la di da di da half a mile away because that ball is always going to be half a mile away. So what we want to do is concentrate on keeping her close to us. Play little games with us, scatter feed, do some different bits and bobs. Tennis ball here, tennis ball there, a little bit of tug of war. It's all around us. Because what we want her to do when she grows up is realise that the bubble or the space around us is better to be than in the next postcode or the next county. Okay, that's helpful. I'm not throwing anything for her yet. She's staying close by. She's meeting the odd dog, well, quite a few dogs actually, because we go to the Heath. She started joining us on our Sunday morning, half hour around the Heath, where there's lots of dogs. They're all lovely to be fair, but she's half off lead because she's got a, a line on her so I can get her back easy enough if there is a problem Brilliant. yeah she, she's a, she's fine but she's occasionally running from some dogs because it might end up you know they're bigger than her and coming yeah. towards her uh, what's the best thing to do there at the moment I'm sort of trotting off after her 
and I'm getting hold of her line and just bringing her back to where I am and carrying on our way. I'm not Excellent. scooping her up in my arms. Yeah, no, we, we don't want to go down the lines of wrapping her up in cotton wool. We want to expose her effectively. Um, so we're not picking little dogs up because instantly they'll seek salvage in our arms. And before you know it, you're dealing with a jumping up problem. So an interaction is totally fine. If a dog comes over or she wanders in the dog or another dog's paths cross ours, totally fine. But we want to monitor it. We want to watch it. If it's getting a bit boisterous, come on, Pip, let's go, mate. Or, okay, yep, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Lovely. You said hello. Come on, mate. Away you go. And if you need to have a little bit of a treat or a bit of sausage or whatever, yeah. it's, it's all, all this is about is us constantly growing with her as she matures and gets more confidence so that the more she grows and gets more confident, we're constantly matching that with interest in us. Because if we don't, she will become very bored of us. She will make the decision not to come back. She will make the decision to continue playing with the dog that's half a mile away. So as long as we uh, match her maturity and confidence with us being the center of her universe, very little problems whatsoever. Okay, amazing. That's really helpful, John. Thank you. No problem.